Hey everybody, so I hope you're having a really really great day. Today I'm going to bring to you the promised video from my last one. So the last video I did was my face journaling flip through and I had some really sweet comments and lots of thumbs up which was really great so I'm glad you guys really liked that and I promised that I would share with you what I take with me when I go on holiday and I still want a face journal when I'm on holiday because I cannot go without like probably two maybe three days of face journaling I need to even do like just a little bit each day and I just really yearn to do it and so going a whole week without face journaling is just mad to me and the last couple of holidays we've been on have been in the car so that works really great because this bag is super heavy this probably isn't very practical if you're going on a plane and I haven't had to conquer that one yet so First things first, the bag that I have here is a Bonte canvas tote bag which I got on Amazon. It's not heaps expensive, it's very sturdy, very practical, made of cotton, like I'm pretty sure actually it's washable and I just got a black one because well it's classic. It's got short straps, it's got long straps, it's got then an even bigger, thicker, fatter strap, it's just got straps everywhere which is kind of handy because then however whatever distance you want to take it and however you want to take it you can go crossbody you can just literally pick it up in your hand it's great so I really really like the bag I didn't really have a bag that I could repurpose otherwise I totally would have done that and I did look through all of my bags to see if there was one that would match but I wanted something that had was quite sturdy so it wasn't like too floppy kind of around the edges because you're sort of throwing quite a lot in there and you need it to stand up when you put it on the floor so you can kind of reach in and work from it and then also it needed to be the right size like not super huge but not like tiny so I could definitely take enough stuff and I have gone on two holidays with this bag and it's just brilliant I ever use everything in it and yeah so I'm really hoping that you enjoy seeing what I take with me I have written a full blog post with everything in it with like even more detail than I'll probably share with you today so make sure you check that out in the description down below I'll also make sure that all of these items are linked down below so that if you're interested you can go and check them out so this is how much stuff there is in here there's quite a bit there are a really good number of pockets in this bag so it's got like a zipped bit there and this fits A4 documents which is one of my major things I wanted from a bag and then the other side it's got like some pen holders which I don't use but then a couple of other pockets which are really really handy. So I'm going to start with those pockets and the first thing I take with me is my Skechers pocket box um, of watercolours which is a Windsor and Newton one. It is diddy, it's really tiny, it's so much smaller than I thought it was going to be when I ordered it but it's exactly what you need if you are starting out with watercolours which I am very much starting out <laughs> with watercolours. It is really really just like a really tiny simple palette and but it's just really fantastic. It's got every colour you could need that you would want to blend. I mean technically I think you only need three colours to make all the colours in the world so the fact you've got like more than that is quite handy and then in the other pocket I've actually got quite a lot of stuff so I've got my mini stapler which I love because I just seem to use it all the time and it's actually only loaded with two different colours of staples but usually there are three I usually have white copper and then just like regular staples they're not that much more expensive to get different colour staples and it's kind of fun then I have my very trusty pripped refill roller with like permanent double sided tape this is just the best thing ever if you're interested in doing any kind of paper crafting or sticking any kind of paper to other paper. It's the best thing that you could possibly use. And you basically just open it up, take this thing out of here, replace the cassette, and then you just like keep the same plastic outer shell. And then I have a bunch of different like stickers and stuff in here. So I've got some little enamel dots which are quite cute and fun, pearl dots, enamel triangle-y things. I have these really great sticker books from Ikea, which actually will have like the same print on each page. So there's like heaps of the same stickers, but they're really like quite basic, but really great and nice and affordable. So then there's quite a bit of stuff in the side pocket. I've got 
stencils, so uppercase and lowercase. These are really quite handy if you just want to like, I don't know, do a slightly different style of font, I guess, and just make it really easy on yourself. And then I've got these like craft stickers, which also haven't used yet because I have recently only just put them in the bag. I change things around in the bag when I kind of either get something new or I just feel like I want to rotate stuff and that probably the only place I rotate stuff is in the big A4 side pocket. So these were really cheap on Amazon but I just thought they were kind of cute. And then I did just rotate this in as well which is like my hexagon templates because maybe I just want to draw a load of very perfect hexagons for some reason. I also have like some calligraphy pages so if I'm like really stuck for how to do a certain letter and I'm having an absolute mind blank. I'm so much better at doing like faux calligraphy so my writing is like so much better than it was but I still get stuck on some letters so quite handy to have. Yeah these are a printout from scribblinggrace.com really fantastic resource very handy. I have also got an illustrated faith bible journaling mat which you just like stick underneath and it's really great to have like a hard texture especially if the thing that you're doing um is on a page that's on top of another page that's got like just different textures on it so you want like a really smooth surface to either write on or paint on or something very handy a page from a book with some birds on it which i could stick in and i've got a couple of printouts on sticker paper of labels which I just occasionally cut out and then use those. Then I've got a couple more random things so I've got some more things I've printed on sticker paper so some just some letters which I've then like gone over with um, a pen to make them like lined. Sticker paper is really brilliant and really fun to just make your own stuff and I'm just trying to keep it very very simple <laughs> and so that's one thing. Then I have my very trusty, these are like an essential for me, these are heat proof Teflon craft sheets which I think you can also use for baking actually but they are, it's basically a plastic that you can do so many things on but I actually tend to use this more than I do the illustrated faith mat at just sliding it underneath my page when I'm doing some painting and I just find it really great. I got like big, I think they were A3 and then I've cut them down and then I fold them in half but I usually have two in here but I think the other one must just be down in the office. And then I also have, last thing, is like a pack of vintage sheets which I think I bought on eBay but you can get them on Etsy and stuff so if you just type in like junk journal ephemera then you get random vintage pages so there's like music pages, there's old dictionary pages and stamps and just old magazine pages and it just makes page is really interesting and keeps things really fun for me. I love that. So now I'm going to go on to the main bit of the bag and what's in the main bit. So the first thing is my actual journal. Of course, that's kind of important. I haven't got it in like a protective like fabric case or anything like that. I might think of doing that, but then I also think like the next journal probably won't be a Loish term, but might be like a junk journal or something of a different size. So We'll see, it's, it's fine, this is like so hardcore, this cover, so it doesn't really mind being in there. Okay, and the next thing I have in here is my sticker book. So I was thinking of a solution to how I would take all my stickers with me, because stickers I love, and I have had loads over the years from doing scrapbooking, but also it's one of the easiest ways to decorate a page when you're not heaps artistically talented, <laughs> and you can just kind of put stickers together in one way and they just look really cool. So this I got from Paper Chase, it's their A5 Wiro display book, Frosted, and it's just a display book with different um, pages but it's really handy because it's got a wired binding and so you can lay it flat which is great and then you can just work with whatever stickers you have and I have so many different stickers in here that I love. Some of my favourites are like the vellum ones that I've got actually from um, eBay and I just love, like some of these are just so beautiful. And vellum ones are really great because they just have this like lovely frosted background rather than a really harsh edge so that looks really nice and I really like all like the text ones as well so these ones 
and some of the illustrated faith ones really handy to have and when you're just wanting to add a little something to the page especially if you've done a page that's mostly just like written journaling that you've like done some journaling based on a podcast or a preach or something you just want to add a little something extra I've got a lot of like floral ones as well which I really like and oh, I just love stickers and this was like the best solution ever it's, it's quite fat but they don't actually fall out next thing I have in here is my devotional from church and uh, this is what we're going through at the minute I actually haven't started week five shocking so I need to I need to do that because it's nearly the end of week five but I tend to do it all either either on one day or over two days anyway but I, I seem to always manage it before Sunday so that's really handy I've also got a very broken book of uh, paper or paper pad and this is one of my favorites this is the wildflower paper pad which is just I don't know it's just like really really beautiful really beautiful I love this this is just a six by six one you can get various different sizes but the six by six is like quite cheap and I use it in so many different ways I tend to not use like the whole sheet but you can make like really nice pockets or bookmark that you write on the other side of or just like a background or just I don't know so many different options with a paper pad other random ha handy things that are in here are this microfiber cloth which you can see I've used for I'm going to use this in particularly last when I did my waves um, page with watercolours because then I could just kind of rub off excess paint and that was really handy with watercolours but you could use this for like stamping and all sorts of different things so and then a print stick which is like super handy for anything that doesn't work with the tape runner this is really great I don't have any liquid glue in here because I don't tend to find that I do anything like that arty uh, when I'm traveling so I tend to kind of stick to the basics then I have this which is full of Tombow jewel brush pens and I love Tombow brush pens they are my favorite pen to use because they have two different sides so you can just do simple writing or you can do brush work which is just makes everything look beautiful and they're really easy to make writing look lovely so I've got various different colors and I basically started by getting a couple of just sets that you can get on Amazon uh, because it's a bit cheaper to get them that way if only slightly because it's they're still quite expensive it's about two pounds 95 I think for each pen so I get them literally like one a month <laughs> and uh, so now I'm really considering which colors it is I want to add and I tend to be adding more pastel colors I started out with more like stronger colors but I tend to find I use them as like a sort of background shade and so pastels or like lighter versions of colors are really really handy so then the next thing I have is this um, A5 tough bag which is filled with washi tape actually and also some stickers like tiny little circle stickers and this which is double sided tape which sometimes the roller, the print roller doesn't work on really thin pages and like older pages and so this works really great on those and I've got like thin tape in here and thick tape and all sorts of different types of tape. There's quite a lot of like autumnal looking tape. I get most of my tape from AliExpress, which is like super cheap, takes a while to arrive, but super duper cheap. And then, I don't know, like Etsy, sometimes where it's more expensive, sometimes Amazon, sometimes eBay, various different places. Then I've got this tiny tin, which I've just got a couple of these in, literally a couple because I made a bunch filled it and then I've used them all so you just sort of put a little bit of ribbon through a paper clip and it's just a nice way of bookmarking certain pages and I know what they mean I know no one else will know what they mean or what those pages are but I know what it kind of stands for sometimes I just match the paper clip with the color of the page but yeah they're just like a little yellow one they're really really like handy cute little addition to a page and I just keep them in this cute little tin and the next couple that I've got in here, I've got another tough bag and just a regular Ziploc bag. This one's got like tiny pieces of ephemera and ephemera, ephemera in it. And literally they are so random, the things I've got in here. I've got some like journaling cards. I've got just like some random ends of book pages. I've got a lot of magazine clippings. 
this is where I keep a lot of the stuff that I like find on Pinterest and then I'll have printed it out and cut it up ready to go some random things on sticker paper like the word love just like lots of random bits and bobs some like leftover smaller pieces of card like a teeny tiny scrap of vintage paper so I keep like my smaller bits in this one and then this one has my bigger cards in it so I've got a couple of like random postcards I got at Monet's garden I've got some cute envelopes that I could use in the journal and then like my random Ikea prints which come in like handy most of these come in really handy for just like making an extra page or making a pocket or just um, adding as a background sometimes and then last but by no means least and will probably take almost as much time as the rest is my little pen pouch so this is a lit lab pen pouch or pen case so I've just sort of jammed some stickers in here I don't know what you would put in this one like there's so many pens in it that there's not really much more space so <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm going to show you this but this is sort of what it looks like on the inside this always falls out it's my pencil sharpener uh, so I'll just take everything out and show you what I've got in here I think so first thing that's in here is a pencil this is just a really boring pencil and I did have a mechanical pencil or I got a mechanical pencil but I just didn't get on with it it was too fancy and I just only needed something really dull so I've got a real giant backlog of pencils that I've got from various places so I will go through those and then after that might think about getting a more fancy but regular kind of pencil. Then I've got a couple of pens I actually don't use heaps frequently they're really great for writing on photos but when I'm traveling I actually don't tend to use them that much I use them a lot more when I'm at home but I tend to keep all the pens I use most often still in this pen case so these uni poscas are really great for writing on photos. This is a black 0.7 mil, and then I've got a white 0.7 mil, and then I've actually got a pen here that I don't use that much, but if you do use it, I would like to know what you use it for, which is one of these giant, very fat Faber-Castell Pitt artist pens, and this is the white one. But I just don't find it writes on many things, so I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but. I don't really like it that much so that might not have much of a place I keep trying it on different things and just keep getting disappointed but perhaps I just haven't found it's calling yet and then these <laughs> are a couple of pens I use literally all the time so these are uniball signos and I've got a white one and a bronze one and I absolutely love them they write on everything and oh, they're just just really brilliant really brilliant and then I've got going on the metallic theme I've got a Sakura pen touch um, in gold I've got a sharpie in bronze they sell these at the range for really cheap actually quite a lot of these pens which is why I like them and why I have a stash because if you buy them individually on something like Amazon even it's quite expensive so the range sell them for a good price this is a pen I my dad gave me I think either for like my 16th or my 18th and I lost it ages found it again and it's just a regular ballpoint pen but it's a really nice ballpoint pen I shouldn't say regular but it is ballpoint it's not like I don't know anything more fancy it's a Waterman and it just feels lovely in my hands and it's what I use for most of my journaling is just a regular ballpoint you can just use any kind of ballpoint it doesn't really matter it doesn't have to be fancy it's just that one reminds me of my dad then I recently purchased a silver uh, uniball signo and then I've got a pilot g2 which is basically a black gel pen which is a fancier black gel pen <laughs> I think and I don't know I sort of like this I don't use this that much I know some people use this for all of their writing but I just really prefer writing in ballpoint because it doesn't skip and I get really annoyed with gel pens because sometimes they skip and then you have to go back and then like write over it again. That's not really for me. Then I've got this Pigma Micron Zero 2 and it's for waterproof and fade proof fine lines. So it's really, really great for if you've done a drawing that you're going to put some colour on with watercolours or any kind of paint. Then if you've done it in pencil and then you want to go over it so it's got 
lines underneath the watercolour then this is really good pen for that. Then I've got a uni pen fine line in grey and actually I use this one a lot because it if you want to add like some really subtle definition or some very subtle doodling or outlines or something then this grey one is really really great. I've got my two most used pens apart from my Waterman these are probably the ones I use the most so this is my Tombow Fudano Suke pen and it just has like a tip like this uh, it's a scripting like pen or a calligraphy pen rather and it just makes your writing look amazing if you are really not that great at writing and you just think you've got really ugly writing this will really help your writing look so much nicer I promise so Tombow Food No Suke, I know you can get like a fine tip and a fatter tip and I'm not sure which one it is I've got but I'd just probably get the set because they're probably quite similar. Then I also have got this Stettler Tri Plus Broadliner which I love. I wanted to get a kind of fine liner but that was fatter just so I can do like outlines without having to go around it a couple of times and that it would be consistent and very black. And this has answered all of my questions really I love that pen so then I also have how did I miss this one I've got um, a two-way glue pen I don't use this very much but sometimes you just want to get like a little bit of an edge of something has like come up and you want to glue it back down and so you kind of just press with this until the glue comes out comes out blue dries white or clear rather I should say and then yeah it's the zig two-way glue pen also on the other kind of slightly random pen things this is an art masking liquid so if you want to do a piece of art but you don't want the paint to go somewhere so say you want to do like a border or you want to put something within a circle which is this you can put around the edge or over the thing you don't want to have the paint put on and then you just rub it off once the paint's dried everywhere else so I used it when I did I did like a page where I did some acrylic flowers over some text that I'd already had on the page and so I put this straight over the text, painted over the top and then rubbed it off and then so you could still see the text underneath it. So this is actually very handy and I'm sure there's so many different ways of using it that I haven't discovered yet. But then I've just got a couple of erasers, so I've got this one because well my son saw it and thought it was cute and wanted me to buy it so I did and it's actually really really nice eraser but these are my favorite these are the high polymer erasers from Pentel and they are brilliant fantastic I love them and then I've just literally got this really old pencil sharpener which contains your pencil sharpenings which I really appreciate uh, especially when traveling because you might not have anywhere to put them always got to have a pencil sharpener and then the last couple of things I've got in here are this, which is like a, just a six inch um, metal ruler. Really handy to have a metal ruler because you can tear pages really easily with it because it's got like the weight behind it and just gives you a really nice fine line. These are from Amtec, but you can get metal rulers everywhere. And then I've got these, which are the Aquash water brush pens. They've got different size tips. I don't think you can really see. Like that one's a big one. That one's the smallest one that's like a medium one but you can do really nice scripting or just generally do any kind of watercolor with these on the go and i have used these like stupidly and refilled them and i just absolutely love them they are just really really fab i've had no problems with them leaking i literally just put water in them and carry them with me everywhere or they just stay in the house for a couple of months with water in and they are fine they work great they don't leak and the the brushes at the ends are still really beautiful and they're just lovely to use and I've used these a lot. Very happy to always have those with me. And then I have got the Artline Drawing System Fine Liners, which I do use, but I probably don't really use like the 07, but I use the 01 and 03 quite a lot when I want to do a really fine line. Lols, they're called fine liners. That all fits in this little case. I love it. So, that was exhausting and probably really long, but oh my goodness, I've just remembered a whole separate pocket I haven't even shown you. This bag is epic. 
Okay. So I've got all of these things in one of these other pockets. So I've got my biggest acrylic block because I've got a variety of different sizes of stamps. I don't want to bring every single. I've got like a set of three acrylic blocks and then yeah this is just the biggest one of the lot and I just thought that was better to have a bigger one. I've got some florals, kind of more florals. I mostly use this one here and then some alphabets and just some really random things on there but I actually use that a lot and then this one as well so it's got like frames and swatches and then these ones are really really great. This is an illustrated face set. These are really great. And then for inks, actually, I just carry these Versafine minis. And so I've got Crimson Red, Majestic Blue, Black, and Toffee. But yeah, I just kind of keep them with some washi tape over them just so that the lids don't fall off and like mess up my bag. But that's really easy to just kind of, just like take it off and then you're good to go, so love washi tape for that. Washi tape is a very versatile thing to have in your bag because you don't just use it for crafting, like you can use it for securing stuff as well. So I think that is actually everything now. I don't think there's any other secret hidden pockets that I've forgotten. So I hope that was really interesting to you guys. I just want to give a word of caution of like if you're starting out and you really want to get into faith journaling, just start with whatever you already have and just get into a, a habit and a practice before you kind of splurge on any goodies. It can be a bit of a minefield, all of the supplies and like what you need, but you don't need anything really more than like a pen and something to write in and all of this other stuff is really just extras and most of it's stuff I've just been curating over years and years and years so I hope that that is helpful to you guys and if you have any questions please do let me know like I said all the links will be down below and please go and read the blog post if you want some like extra advice on things that you might need when you're starting faith journaling so if you like this video, please give it a big fat thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. And I really, really hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you so, so much for joining me. Bye.